So good to be here this morning. I think about the church and fellowship with church, and we're going to talk about fellowship this morning. And good things continue to happen here at, at Hampton. I uh, said to Chad, our, our topic this morning is about fellowship, and he started singing about love. And that hits the nail on the head. Because when we love one another, we have fellowship one with another. And the fellowship is, is greater than just going and, and having potluck together. And I know that a lot of times we say, well, we're going to have a fellowship meal, and we have it, the potluck and such. But fellowship is so much broader than that. And good things continue to happen here at Hampton because we have Katie Sparkman uh, placing membership here and wanting Hampton to be her church family and sharing the fellowship that we have here. And her daughter also, Kenley, and their name and address will be in the bulletin this next week, and we'll get that. If I remember to get this to Terry, their name in the bulletin will get in the next week. But it, I just love what the first song we started with, because I knew what I was going to preach on, and how sweet, how heavenly. Can you get that real quickly? Uh, the first song, how sweet, how heavenly is the sight when those that love the Lord and can't get it. That's all right. Uh, uh, just, just look at this. What we sang, and think about this. And I was thinking about I'm preaching on fellowship, and Chad comes with this song and starts us all together. And, and I wish I had, had preached my sermon, and then you sang this song, because it, it just seems like that would just pull everything together. How sweet, how heavenly is the sight when those that love the Lord. And that's us. And in and, and thinking about fellowship, we love the Lord. And so it is in one another's peace delight, and so fulfill the word. That's fellowship. When we join together in, in one another, when we love one another, we have peace with one another. Now, it's, it's, I know that we have, it's not always peace because we're not perfect, but we always have fellowship. And we strive toward that perfect fellowship. And we think about this and, and fellowship. And so let, let's go back to Acts chapter 2. And when we talk about fellowship, we go with the, the beginning of the church. Acts chapter 2, in particular in verse 44 and following. And those that uh, believed had all things that were together and had all things in common. This is fellowship. This is joining together with one another, sharing with one another. I know it's much more than just the, the potluck. It's sharing together our sorrow. And our sighs as how sweet, how heavenly that song talks about. When we share with one another, when we commune with one another, and when we're involved with one another, they had all things in common. They sold their possessions and they had to every man as they had need. That's fellowship. It's, it's sharing together what we have. They continued daily. Breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness and heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. And this is fellowship time. They continue steadfastly in fellowship, verse 42 said in Acts 2. It's continually, purposefully saying we are going to have fellowship with one another and we're going to share together with one another in this fellowship. And so I would say there's two reasons for fellowship. One is to, en to encourage one another. The second is to strengthen one another. When we have fellowship together, there's a purpose for that. It's just not going together and, and eating together so that we can, you know, be filled with eating. It is a sharing and strengthening with one another. And think about this as we talk about fellowship. Our purpose for fellowship. God in His divine providence said, I want to have and I'll call it church. Church literally means coming together, gathering it is. And in this gathering together, we'll have fellowship with one another, sharing together with one another. You know, church is not man's idea, idea, that's God's idea. And when we come together, God said we need to come together. We need to come together as different things. We need to come together, number one, fellowship. When we talk about coming together, we come together as a body. We think about a body when we have this. We have everything in our body working together. Fellowship is body. Romans 12, verse 4, it would say we have many members, but one body. That body is the church, and we are members of that one body. 
And so when we have our body working together, that, that's fellowship together. You know, the hand doesn't go and independently do, do his own thing, and the eye independently doesn't do their own thing. It's your body works together. Hopefully your body works together, right, and everything works, and everything has a purpose. And our body joins together is so that we can, we can function as one. The hand is not separate and apart from that. The eye is not separate and apart from the body. The ear is not separate and apart from the body. Many members, but one body, one unit, one joined together. We are members one together. We're one body, the body of Christ. And so it is that we have, we being many are one body in Christ. Everyone members one of another. We're not only just members of the body of Christ, we're members one of another. We share together with one another to make the body of Christ. And so when we fellowship, we are body. Number two, when we're fellowship, not only are we the body of Christ, we're the family of Christ. And so when he talks about joining together, working together as a body, we work together as a family also. No more strangers and foreigners. and We're fellow citizens of the household of God. Amen. Isn't it wonderful when he describes church, he says, we're family together, brothers and sisters together, as we say with that. We're brothers in Christ together, sisters in Christ together. We are joined together as family. There's something special about family coming in together. We had a family gathering yesterday at my sister's house, and so brothers and sisters together. It was a great day, great time together, sharing that. Get the, get the cousins together and let them see each other and play with one another and say, now have a family time. We're family. Something special about whenever God said, I want church gathering. It's just not that we come together. We're family together. We are the body together. We're family together. Think about the specialness and and saying that there's just something special about that, that common bond, and that common bond is love. Right? Love is the golden chain that binds, right? That when we sing the how sweet, how heavenly. We love one another. We're family together. And so when we have fellowship, thinking we're the body together. When we have fellowship together, we're the family together. When we have fellowship together, we have exhorting one another together. When we have Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, and we, we many times talk about this, about, you know, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Well, that is a symptom when people forsake the assembly. The problem is we don't come together and exhort one, exhort one another as the manner of some men. Exhort one another, encourage one another. When we exhort one another, encourage one another, we come together because we're built up. It's good to come together. It's good to, to sing the songs about loving one another and angry words and, you know, love one another. Let's do what's good and let's do what's right because we're family together. Exhort one another. That's fellowship. And so it's not just saying, okay, I... I've, I've got to come in. You know, it used to be some years ago we'd come in. Y'all remember when we'd, we'd fill out a card, and you'd, you'd get in, and whenever we did uh, after the communion, we would pick up the cards, and we'd, we'd go through the card. Who's here? And, you know, it's just like, well, I, I filled out my card. I was here. No, it's just not being here physically. We come with a purpose to exhort one another, encourage one another. That's fellowship. Build each other up. Because the world, we're going to the world tomorrow and the world's going to tear us down. The world is going to discourage us. The world is going to say, you don't need to be a Christian. You know, talk about Bible and heaven and church and, and, and you know, that's, that's just, you don't need that. It's just a crutch or whatever. No, I need my church family. I need encouragement. I need to be built up. And so when we come together, there's strength together. 
And God said, we'll have church. We'll have exhorting one another, encouraging one another, loving one another. So not only do we have the fellowship with the body and fellowship as a family and fellowship ex- as exhorting, but we have fellowship as strength. There's, there's strength in, in this body coming together. It, 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 two are better than one. 200 are better than one. 300 is better than one, isn't it? When we come together as a family together and, and we all join together and say, you are not alone in whatever you face in the world. You're not alone. We're with you. Many times it is whatever you're going through, there have been others that have already been through that and have overcome. And we can overcome too. Because they, they say, hey, listen, I know, what, I know what you're going through. I've been through it. Let me tell you what helped me. I want to be there with you. I want to be there for you. I'm gonna, every step of the way, we're going to work with this together. There's strength in that. If we fall, there's someone to lift us up. God didn't say, listen, I want, I want people to be saved that... Uh, I want them separate and apart from me. I don't want them knowing one another. We're not talking about family. We're not talking about a body. We're, we're just talking about individuals separate and apart from one another. The Christians don't even know one another. He didn't say that. He said, we come together. We are a body. We are a family. We, we gain strength from one another. That's fellowship. Helping one another. A three, four Fold cord is not quickly broken or easily broken, as some say. There's fellowship together, strength. And ag- along with that, not o- only is there strength, but there is support in fellowship. When we talk about if any be overtaken in a fault, then yes, it is that we are overtaken in a fault. Ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Sometimes we fall, falter, fall away even. Where do we go? If not the church. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Church. Some describe church as a hospital for sinners, a place we go to be healed. It's not filled with perfect people, sinless people, but those who seek to do the Father's will. So what are we going to do? How are we going to help one another? How are we going to bear one another's burdens and encourage one another? And so we have fellowship as the body of Christ, the, the family of Christ, where we come together and we're encouraged, come together and gain strength, come together and gain support. But you know, I'm going to look at three examples. Three examples in the Bible it is that, that those who rejected fellowship or God's way. First one is Jonah. God said to Jonah, you go to Nineveh. Nineveh is the capital of Assyria, They are not part of the Jewish nation. They're not descendants of Abraham. They are Gentiles, as they would call them. Later on, the Assyrians would come and, and, and capture the ten tribes to the north and take them off into captivity and treat them terribly. But at this particular time, it is that God said to Jonah, you go to Nineveh and you preach and you tell them about me. And you, we know the story of Jonah. He didn't want to go. I don't know whatever reason it was, whether he thought that, well, they don't deserve God's mercy and kindness, and I'm not going to go to them, whether it was, it was. I don't know what reason it was that he just didn't go. The Bible didn't say. But we do know he didn't go. I'm not going to go and talk to them. He ran away. We know the story. He got swallowed by a great fish. He got spit upon, and then finally changed his mind. He went to Nineveh, and he preached. And from the least to the greatest, the people in Nineveh repented. What was the reaction of Jonah? 
I mean, if you had a preacher, if God said, you go to this particular city and you preach about me, and the whole city repented, you know what? This preacher would be, he would say, oh, isn't that wonderful? You know, a whole city responds to God, where a whole city repents in sackcloth and ashes. A whole city turns to God. Isn't that wonderful? Wouldn't it be a time of rejoicing, a time to say, Lord, I, I'm sorry that I rejected you. I'm sorry that I ran away from you. I should have gone here, and, and I'm so glad that these people repented and, and rejoiced with them. But he didn't do that. He went up on the hillside. He looked over the city. He was angry God did not destroy the city. He was displeased. In particular, Jonah chapter 4, verse 1, you look at that and what was the reaction of Jonah? Why did, of those who repent and sackcloth and ashes and, and turn to God, and he says, I'm not happy with that. For whatever reason it was, he was angry. He didn't rejoice in those who repented. You look in Luke chapter 15, verse 28, when it was that the prodigal son, as we say, went away and, you know, he got his inheritance from his father and he went to a far country and just wasted all of that. The older brother said, and, and, and riotous living, spend it on whatever he wants, eat, drink, and be merry. Let's have a great time. I've got tons of money. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live the life of the, wor the world. Eat, drink, and be merry, he would say. Or the thought is in there. And finally, when he didn't have anything, eating with the hogs, the lowest of the low that he could go, it said he came to himself. Sometimes it is that we reach the lowest of the low that we can go before we come to ourselves and and like the prodigal son, it is that many times when we're flat on the back, the only way we can look is up. And he looked up. He came to himself. He, he said, in my father's house, even the servants are treated better than I am. I'll go and I'll say, can I be a hired servant? He went to his father. His father ran to greet him, hugged him and loved him, put the robe on him, treated him as son. A banquet was prepared. And the older brother, what did he do? Did he rejoice that his younger brother came back home? The father said he, he was dead and is now alive. He was lost and is now found. And the older son, in Luke 15, verse 28, said, You know, what's the music for? What's the partying for? And the servant said, Your, your brother's come back home. He was angry at that. He didn't want to go and enjoy the family. He was angry. His brother came home. The third example is Saul in the church. You know when the Saul was persecuting Christians, going and when Saul was on the road to Damascus, he was going there to, to persecute Christians. He was there with a purpose. I, I've got this movement that I'm going to stop and do everything in my power to stop those who are following after Jesus. This has got to stop, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill them or I'm going to put them in prison. We're going to wipe them out, these Christians. And he became one. Acts 9, Acts 22, Acts 26, we can read as Saul tells his conversion story. But when he became a Christian and he sought to join himself with the church, can you imagine? Can you imagine someone in the city of Texarkana and city of Texar uh, te uh, in the state of Texas and Arkansas and whatever persecuting Christians? And then they call the church office and say, hey, I've, I've changed and I want to uh, be a a, a member here at Hampton, and, and we say, whoa, wait a minute. Uh, he, he was persecuting Christians. He was killing Christians. We do, you know, can you imagine the church 
And can you imagine the hesitancy in, in saying, well, we don't know about this Saul. Is he just trying to find out where we meet? And, and so the, when he meets with us and then he'll have all the soldiers surround us or whatever and persecute us? Or and Barnabas. Galatians chapter 2, verse 9, it says that Barnabas extended the right hand of fellowship to Saul. And, and, and there were some who would not accept him, displeased about it. Saul later became Paul, wrote most of the New Testament. What a great worker for the Lord he became. Fellowship with one another. I like the songs that we sang because our fellowship, when you read 1 John chapter 1, John said, I write these things that you would have fellowship with us. You see, us, us is that core of fellowship. And we want you to have fellowship with us. We've got fellowship. Fellowship with one another because we have fellowship with the Father and the Son. And when we have fellowship with the Father and the Son, we have fellowship with one another. And when our fellowship is right with the Father and the Son, our fellowship can be right with one another. We, these things are right. I'm going to tell you about Jesus, who he is, why he came, who we are, why we are here, and where are we going. You cannot make it to heaven without fellowship, sharing together with one another, encouraging one another, that you would have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is above it. Where's your fellowship centered? I, is it, do you have fellowship with the Father, sharing together with the Father and Son, and does it flow throughout the church? Fellowship. Trust and obey. Do you trust that God's way is the way? Not our way. God's way is the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. You put your trust. And if you trust him, will you obey him? Mark 16, 16, Jesus said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be condemned. Have you obeyed in responding to the gospel invitation? If not, won't you come right now while we're standing, while we sing?